Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Night Witches. So, the last episode we ran uh, an escort mission with only three mechs. We did fairly well, we picked up some good gear, we were able to get the Wolverine back up and running. Um, actually kind of impressed at how well it turned out in the end. So now we have five mechs up and running, we got the new Hunchback up. Um, it's the 1G, the old version. P pair of large lasers, but we need to get um, some uh, ferro fibers or something to get rid of this primitive armor. The minus 33% armor protection per point of armor is really, really bad. So we need to get something to, to fix this up a bit. Even the primitive engine stuff, uh, we need to get rid of that somehow with something. Uh, plus 20% engine weight factor change. So this guy is really, really limited, but his armor is maxed out. And it's got a pair of large lasers, so um, I think this guy should be okay for what we want to use him for. Uh, we're going to bring him into combat this time. I think we'll let the assassin sit this one out, but we're going to bring everything else. Um, I like the fire started the way it's running with the with the uh, five flamers now, so that's kind of cool. Um, so let's go and have a look. Uh, I actually want to go to the hiring hall first. There's a half decent pilot here, uh, Red Velvet. Kind of a weird name. I mean, Red Comet sounds better, but he's the right price, fifteen four. It's relatively cheap. Steiner poor, independent trader, which gives us. Um, Discount to buy shop items. He's a smuggler, which means he's got an in increased chance to uh, find specials, but he also gives us a discount to buy shop items. And he's a spacer, so he's a reduced pilot cost. So um, I'm going to take this. There's a lot of good stuff in the actual shops now. So I'm going to hire this guy for $42,000 um, and $15 a month. So I'm hoping that if we buy one thing a month, uh, it may offset. Plus, we'll have the extra pilot. He's actually got pretty good stats here to start. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to need an extra pilot. Um, so I'm going to hire him right now, just so we have him. Available. And we're down to 8,000 C bills, so you know that's a bit of a problem. But in the contracts here, there are a ton of great contracts that we can take. Um, lots of stuff here. I think we want to start with mopping up, though. Uh, we do want C bills, but we're going to go up against some pirates here in damage mechs. It's a battle in the tundra, so it's, it sounds like it's perfect for us. So let's negotiate this. Um, and I'm going to go straight up the center here, I think, uh, for this one, just so I know we have enough for repairs, enough for drop costs, and enough to cover the end of the month uh, financial report. So let's accept this. And we're going to leave the assassin out, like I said, and we're going to bring in the Wolverine as the main mech. Firestarter is going to move down here. Hunchback, uh, 4H, and then the 1G at the end. Um, Red Velvet is going to be coming back in. Oh, sorry, Red Comet. I gotta, I'm got i going to get these two mixed up. i got to be careful. So Red Comet's coming back in. We're going to get Satori and the uh, Hunchback down here at the end. Uh, so let's do this. Okay, these guys are damaged, but they're no less dangerous. Waiting for orders. All right. So when I was in uh, figuring out what was going on um, before last episode, or in the middle of last episode, um, with uh, why I couldn't launch the um, with the uh, Wolverine, how it was, um, I started up another another uh, game just to see if I could get it to work fine, and it did. But uh, the funny thing about it was uh, one of the mechs that I picked up. Uh, I started in House Liao. One of the one of the mechs I picked up was a Venom with four medium pulse lasers, and that that's amazing. Like it was totally amazing mech. But the beautiful thing about it, though, it had such a large engine and eight jump jets. And I swear to God, I am not kidding when I say, if I was back here and jumping, I could jump all the way over here behind the enemy on the first turn. I mean, I'd be overheating for sure. But the the amount of jump that that mech had was ridiculous. I don't even know how you could stay standing after that. Like if you went flying across the map board that at a speed that that kind of speed and landed on the other side, there's just no way you could stay standing. All right, where's the enemy I'm detecting here? Not detecting him anywhere. What you talking about? Um I know there's two up here. Uh, we're going to reserve. I've got less fear of reserving now. Um, I had big fears before. Uh, because I was worried about the hesitation loss. But I think at the beginning here, it's okay to reserve. Um, 
Yeah, we got a fair bit of armor, so I'm gonna move down. These guys aren't supposed to be that tough. But yeah, wasp, fire starter. Alright, firing on this guy. It's nice to have the Wolverine back again. Yeah, that guy took some pain. So, um, I don't know if Lady Electo is watching this, uh, my series or not. I, I understand, I know she, um, or they watch um, a lot of the different series just to see if they can find any errors. But um, the one thing I would recommend for uh, pilot quirks is affinity with certain mechs. If you have a pilot that's piloting the same mech all the time, and if you really think about it, that's really the best way to go. Like if you look at, um, for instance, in World War II, the beginning of uh, yes, the United States battle with um, Japan, um, sorry, let me figure this out first. One of the biggest things that the, like the American pilots weren't necessarily worse than Japanese pilots and their planes, um, well, they were uh, on paper relatively inferior to the zero. One of their biggest hindrances was um, crew training times. And what I mean by that is I know they had like 400 hours of flight training time, whereas the Japanese had around 600. Plus they had combat training when they entered the war. But the American pilots were required to train on a variety of different fighters and dive bombers and torpedo bombers. So they had training on, I think it was the Wildcat, probably the Buffalo, most likely, um, I think it was the P-47. Um, but they were also trained on, um, I think the Dauntless and the Dauntless dive bomber. And I think it was, um, it wasn't the Avenger, it was the one before the Avenger. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called now. But I think they were trained on multiple types of aircraft where the Japanese were basically trained only on one. Um, so they were far more familiar with the aircraft. So if I was going to have a quirk, um, I would add, like, if a mech warrior is spending, let's say, 15 or 20 missions in a, in a I know I, and I know I've mentioned this before, but if a mech warrior spends 15 or 20 missions in one type of, or one specific mech, um, perhaps they should get a bonus to piloting and gunnery with that, with that particular mech, and only that mech. So that could be a quirk, right? Quirk, Wolverine, right? Plus one piloting and gunnery or something like that. What can I do for you? Just a thought. Or you can do it in stages too. It doesn't have to be like um, just plus one continuously. It could be, um, Got it. you know, for every 10 missions, you get like first one is a plus one piloting, second one is then plus one targeting. And, you know, maybe the third oh, one is God, like, I don't know, plus one tactics or something. Wow, that was bad. Uh, I may need some more time in the simulator. That's not you, it's the mech. The mech's junkie, just say that. It's the 1G, man. Um, but anyway, that's just my thought. I don't know what you guys think. Um, drop your, your comments in the comment section down below. Do you think, wow, that was 91 damage. What do you think? Should there be quirks okay, like that? That was bad. I know at a certain point... Um, for pilots, it's not going to make that much difference because um, they're so skilled, right? But even in all my series, I don't think I've ever reached tens in all my skills in my series because I don't go with uh, um, I go always go with slow mech warrior pr progression. Taking the shot. Back to missing a lot, are we? Maybe I'll make you my melee mech. Oh, that fell down. Okay, good. Making my melee pilot, maybe, maybe. And yes, I will have a dedicated melee pilot this time. <laughs> In the past, I haven't really gone with uh, a ded dedicated melee mech or melee pilot. We have had plenty of melee mechs, but just no melee pilots. But this time, I think we will. I think we kind of have to. Especially like that last mission, if we encounter those uh, clan mechs again. Definitely going to want to have uh, a melee pilot up on there. Yeah, make yourself unstable again. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Thanks for coming out. 
I'm receiving you. Red Comet. You know what your job is, girl? Mm. Don't know how fast these other guys are. It's still the same chance to hit. So we're going to walk it. Sorry, guys, I got to go through here. You know what? The other thing I, I, know, I know, I know I've mentioned this before. The other thing they should do uh, is have a movement plot or waypoints so you can waypoint where you're running. Um, so it would be um, move, run, or waypoint. Waypoint, move, waypoint, run, or shift click these or something. And then you can click here, click here, click here so you can run around the uh, gravel. Just a thought. Don't know if anyone wants to add that. Because it sure as hell won't be me. I'm not a coder. Um, and I I just have nothing but envy for the people that can do this. Um, back in the old days, back with my Amiga, like that's like eons ago. Um, I used to go in and hex edit. That was easy enough. When you're hex editing um, code. Oh, that guy, does that in the face? Now, yeah, it was, I think. I don't know. Um, I used to be able to hex edit games to get them to do what I wanted to do. And then I started coding my own back on, in the Amiga days, um, which, you know, uh, anyone that can do coding, I was trying to learn it on my own. It wasn't really easy. And I, I think it was, I can't remember the name of the, uh, nice. I can't remember the name of the pro. Oh, um. Critical hit, Commander. Ah, oh, it'll come to me in this mission somewhere, or probably after I end the mission and uh, and uh, I'm editing it. I'll just be like, oh, it was. I want to call. It's not Division. It's uh, um. Ah, I can't remember. It was an Amiga. It was a third-party Amiga software. Anyway, um. So when I was editing my own, or making my own code, it was just like really hard to make my own game. And um, I kind of gave up on it after a while. Goodbye. Enemy mech destroyed. Um, Visionary, that was what it was called. Visionary. That's a really old, like, third-party um, Amiga game-building software. Hey, um, it was actually quite good for what it did. But uh, that was back before, like, even 3D games existed. Like, that was, like, you know, the, like, the, like, the 3D that we have now, like, for instance, like, Doom. If you take Doom, for instance, right, and imagine that each area is a square, so you could only move one forward, move forward one square at a time, and the walls would change texture back and forth. So that was what it was like. And then when you turn left, it basically reorients your whole view left. It would step forward one, one square at a time, turn one square at a time. That was what it was like, right? So um, that was the old, like, 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 like that's a long time ago, like early 90s. Um, I think it was 91 or 92 when I was working on it. Boom. Anyway, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so I appreciate how hard coding is. So I have nothing but um, respect for the people who do it. It's such a hard thing to do. Um, I'm sure today the actual coding might be... I don't want to say it's simpler, um, because I know it's like, in order to get what you, what you... Oh, wait a minute. Now we already have two of these, right? Do we want to have four of these on a melee mech? Medium heavy laser pirate. So it's got misfire. Plus or minus 25. See, yeah, I don't want to risk it. Um, so I've got nothing but respect for people that can actually do the coding and stuff. Oh, well, hello there. Plus two recoil though. Plus 15 weapon heat generated. I don't know if we want to go that road this early. Prototype double heat sinks. That's a possibility as well. Don't think we need the core. 
Not right now, anyway. So let's grab a prototype double heat sink. So we did get a pirate medium laser. Nice, another flamer. We're not going to really use it right now, right now but a couple of fire starter pieces. Cool. All right, 28,000. Okay, so as I was saying, now, I don't think coding is is any easier nowadays. And I, I'm going to use my profession as a, as a reference. So I'm a video editor. And back when I first started, um, now video editing is all done on a computer, right? But originally it was tape to tape. And if you've ever done tape to tape editing, and I'm pretty sure almost all of you haven't, but if you've ever done tape to tape editing, it's not an easy thing. You can get a good product, a relatively good product out of it. Straight cut editing is easy. Um, if you want to even put a dissolve in, it's not it's not as quick as like one click and you're done. It was like you had to roll two sources back and dissolve from one to the other, right, using a switcher. Um, and if you didn't match frame it, then the dissolve was wrong. You had to go back and relay out everything before it again to get the dissolve correct. So um, I'm sure that's all Greek, but still, and I've even edited f original film with splicers and tape film together, you, you know, doing editing that way as well. So I know how hard it is to, to get it to do what you wanted it to do. And then when um, digital edi editing first came out, um, the quality was so bad, you really could only use it for um, doing a rough cut. And then you would take that somewhere with your your tapes because you shot everything on tape back then. You would take that um, edit decision list to a online suite and they would put your show together for you using tape to tape method because it was a much better product, right? And then as digital got better and better, you didn't actually need to do that. You could actually just export from the machine, but you still needed a, a, a tape machine to go to because back then like YouTube and stuff didn't exist. So there was no digital delivery. It was all delivery by tape. And then it slowly changed over time. But the one thing I know being an editor back then and today, um, it's not so much that it's, that it's easier today. Um, editing is still difficult. It's it's understanding in your head. Um, you need to understand in your head how something goes together. And I th and correct me if I'm wrong. Please mention it in the comment section down below. I think coding is relatively the same thing. It's understanding in your head how to construct something to get it to do what you want it to do using whichever language it is you're, you're do, using, right? So my language would be um, either editing film or editing on tape or editing digitally. Whatever it is, that's that's the language that I use to actually create the thing that I'm creating. Uh, whereas coders, the language they use is obviously whatever um, programming language they're using or, or tool they're using to, to come up with and create it. So there's a lot of creativity involved and a lot of back-end knowledge involved technically in order to get to do what you want it to do um, and I got nothing but respect for coders because that I mean you know I can probably delve into coding language and once I understood um, it I could see how it's laid out but the creativity that also comes in order to get things to do what you want them to do um, that's like an art form in itself so I got nothing but respect for coders so I think in a way that's what it is but I think nowadays um, it's not so much that it's easier but and because it, it takes roughly the same amount of time or longer, it just it gives you more flexibility than anything. Um, uh, digital edit editing platform allows me to do things that I normally would never have been able to do, or if I was able to do them, it would just take me so long that it would, would for the client would become completely cost prohibitive. But today it's like I can easily do it, right? Um, you know, with programs like Adobe After Effects, it's really um, it's about um, your creativity. It'll do whatever you want it to do. You just have to understand how to get it to do that. And it takes time, right? Time and creativity. Um, so I think today with the coders, it's just there's so much more flexibility. Um, it's not any it's not any easier job. In some way, I think it's harder because I think you, that level of creativity, you need to be far more creative than technical, I think, today. And once again, if I'm wrong, if you guys know coders or if you're coders yourself, drop some comments in the comment section down below. I'm always interested to hear everyone's uh, points of view on this, but that's just kind of how I feel. All right, so that with that mission done, let's quickly get our mech pilots back here. I think it was really just the hunchback that took damage. Sorry to take up so much time on that, but um, I, I'm really just really excited about how Rotec is evolving. Um, 
it's just it just seems to be one of those games that is really I think or Rotec itself is only limited by how creative the creators can be and of course it's time right it's in order for them to implement everything they want to implement it's just going to take time to do that right and I'm just every time they, they release a new version I'm just astounded at how creative they get with it and how cool it is you, you know yes there's going to be those bugs here and there right um, but it's just fantastic and I, I, I do um, recommend it any for to anybody um, if you haven't um, shot them a few dollars here or there to get things um, to help them out I recommend doing it because this is if you guys love playing Rotec it's well worth putting a little bit of investment into so that's just my two cents um, all right moving on that's the plug for today uh, not that I've actually been in contact with anybody from Rotec but that's my plug for today um, so let's go to the barracks or sorry uh, command center we want to go right into another contract here uh, I know for a fact we don't really have enough ex experience to do anything else so that was relatively easy um, contested will is a capture base this might give us a couple of lances. I think we really want that. So let's go this. Well, we're going to go maximum salvage on this. So let's go this route. We've got our sea bills for the month. So let's go this route. We're looking good with everything else. Uh, that hunchback really didn't get a chance to shine. So let's bring in that. But we want to uh, bring Satori out. Let's bring uh, Megasaur back in. In the hunchback and uh, let's deploy and get this done Command all right guys create an ancestral fortress um, yeah we know this one it's the ambush valley all right um, so you may be wondering why I hired red red velvet him being a male and all um, we're going to keep all the pilots on the ground as female pilots. Uh, what I, like I said, he's really just the, uh, he's there to give us lower, um, uh, discounted shops and stuff. So I'm probably going to rename him to traveling merchant or something along that lines, just because that's all he's doing is he's just trying to give us a little bit of a, of a break. So he's not going to gain, like he's going to be gaining experience, but I'm not going to be spending any of it. He's just going to be a guy that's just going to be hanging out. So I'll probably call him Zed, Traveling Merchant, and then that way uh, he'll be at the bottom of the list. Um, okay, we know where they are. There's one over here, there's two back here, one up on the hill. Uh, but how do we want to approach this here? I think what we want to do is reserve. Um, maybe they're not, uh, going to do anything. Oh, of course. Maybe there's nobody here. Excuse me, anybody home? Standing by. No shooting, just running. So, um, yes, I know I mentioned if you're standing in the water, uh, sensors um, have a 1.2 no um, against you, so they'll be able to see you at a greater distance across water. Uh, if you're standing in the forest, it's 0.8, so they their sensors are 80% um, less likely, not 80% less likely, but they only reach to 80%, so if you're in the trees, then uh, they have a hard, harder time seeing you at distance. Um, looks like we're free and clear here. Now, the question is, I don't know where the reserves will come from. Commander. Or how tough they're going to be. Let's get our hunchbacks up here. So the 4-H is not bad with the, with the uh, 5 medium lasers, but I like how fast this other one is too, with the two larges. Okay, Ms. Flowers. I have no idea where the enemy's coming from, so let's get up here.
get as much relative cover as we can. I'm going to get you to activate the base. Um, I'm hoping they come from in front. Yes, Commander. Um, Full speed, no target. We got a couple of jump jets on her, but looks like enemy reinforcements. I hear them from over here. Yep, there we go. Centurus, I really hope we get some good shiz out of this. I don't think they're going to crest the hill this turn, so we're going to prep ourselves. There's two. A truck. It looks like it's probably going to be all vehicles. Crap. Well, let's make short work of them and get out of here. Oh, commando. Waiting for orders. Let's get as far as up here as we can. God, I love the sprint on this mech. Yeah, spider. Well. Yes, Commander. So much for good salvage. On my way. Let's see what we got here. I know I said I wasn't going to crest the hill just yet, but I think that truck is the only thing that hasn't gone yet, so... Yeah, Katyushka. At least that's what it looks like. Yeah, kind of cool model. Nice. Let's just target the commando. Not like we're going to hit it all, but we'll give it a shot. Reporting negative damage. Yeah, we need to get you some fire control systems in there. Um, what do you think? Just squash it? We squash it because we can. Here it comes, folks. Engaging physical attack. Nice. So thanks for the tip from um, uh, Fist of Dorn again. He recommended if we're going to squash vehicles, try and do it from the front because a lot of vehicles that have expensive engines and stuff have them in the back. So um, that's a really good tip. Uh, something I hadn't really considered all that much, but uh, no, that's a good tip. So I'm going to try and squash more vehicles from the front if I can. Even the side, you could still step on the back, I think, a little bit, but... Um, so if we can attack them from the front more often, I think we'll do that. Unless we're in one of those positions where we kind of need to uh, kill the vehicle right away, then it'll be a back attack. But yeah, it'll give us a chance to get us, you know, if they have XL engines and stuff in them, to pick some of those up. Pew! Fifteen tons, probably with a medium laser. Could be a large though. Move into here. Shoot this guy up. Yeah, 47%. That's pretty good. Confirmed. Missed with the fluid gun. No big deal. Got a leg shot, though. Um, squash. Squash, squash. Acknowledged. Here comes the super squash. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, you missed? No joy. Sunflower, man. What is it about that mech that you just don't like? I have to switch you out of there. Pew. Oh, it's a large laser. No biggie. Okay, who's going first on their team? The commando. That looked like a lot of damage. Is this that pirate command rail with a vibro shiv? 
Did I take? How much damage did I take? Nothing. Where did I get hit? Leg for two points. Why does that seem complete? Why do I only have 30 points in the head? Oh, for fuck's sakes. Um. Oh, Christ. Why did I say 2? 32. 22. Whatever it is. I don't know why I'm so concerned. I'm not dead. Stop being concerned. Alright, frontal attack. Squash, squash. Now these vehicles most likely won't have anything of value, but you know, saving a little bit of cash, not firing our weapons. Um, yeah, commando first. Location confirmed. Not like he's any more more of a threat. Well, he might be, depending on what his weapon loadout is. Wow. I'm really sorry about these horrible missions, guys. <laughs> I don't know why they're so easy. Maybe we'll do another one. Maybe I'll cut one of the lousy ones and do another one. No, I can't really. I had a, lot, I had a long talk about stuff on this one, so. I'm here. Um. Yeah, it's barbecue. This guy. Bar B. Q. Okay, four hits. I'll take that. Inspired Megasaur. Don't need to be close with her. 54s. Wow, two misses. I saw that. All right, what's he doing? Warning. Enemy in rear arc. Yeah, I don't care. Damage minimal. Yep, sure is. Moon walking. Waiting for order. Red comet. So red comet is kind of an appropriate order name for a flamer mech, I think. It's too bad we can't add, like, permanent sparks or flames coming off the back of this thing. That would be kind of cool. Confirm. Guard a critical hit. I like them apples. Commander. Ms. Flowers. Roger that. This guy's going to be in a lot of pain here. Let's finish this up, take another mission. Wow. You really don't like that hunchback. I gotta say, you just don't like that hunchback. Fire it all. That's probably what it is. It's the hunchback. You don't like the hunchback. We'll have to fix that. That should be it, folks. Let's go home. You know, we got a new loadout for our mechs and everything, and we're just getting junk missions. <sighs> of course, now I say that, I'll probably get hit by a really, really bad hard one here. Improved rocket launchers. Yeah, I don't know. Large lasers. Maybe we take one as a backup. Fusion Core 70. What had... Oh, that was probably from one of the vehicles. That's why we didn't destroy it because we stepped in the front. Okay, good to know. Light rifle ammo, machine gun ammo, SRM ammo, we don't need any of those, so let's go back up. Um, are we going to need a 70 fusion core? Probably not. Take a large laser as a backup. Um, we got like two flamers, I think? Yeah, we got flamers as backups, so we don't need those. Um, we got seven medium lasers, wow, light rifle. What's the weight on this thing? Three tons. Uh, two slots. Recoil of two, eh? Regular machine gun array. Well, we're not getting very much success with these things, so I'll probably leave that out. Well, we can always sell this. 
You're going to laugh at me. I'm taking a hand. Because we don't have any of them. And if we lose one, we're going to have to get one back. Sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to take it because I'm me. All right, spider part. Improved rocket launcher. We got the other large laser and the machine gun array. Internal combustion engine, which we can sell. See, we wouldn't have got a hand if I hadn't done that. Four more heat sinks and light rifle ammo. All right, let's see. Not any damage really at all. Got the one hit in the Wolverine, I think. Yeah, I want to hit on the Hunchback. All right, let's... We get our pilots back one... Two days before the financial report. Let's take another mission real quick here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go. All right, let's go real quick. We can do this. Um, we've been trying to take the ones out down here. I don't know. On guard is, like, iffy. Embassy extraction... Recovery in the polar region. Get her off world. Versus who? Karita. No. Uh, we don't want to go against Karita. I want to keep... Uh, stop the signal. Supply lines? Pirates. Okay, let's go against the pirates. Yeah, might as well go full salvage. You never know. We might find something good. Let's accept this. Actually, wait. Is there an... There was an... Wait a minute. I think there was a Karita ambush convoy mission. Come on. Oh. We're technically still there. Um, no. Yeah, it's half skull though. Uh, really? Well, let's just go this way. Mop up. Let's mop them up. Hopefully we get something good. Uh, we want to move Sunflower out of the Hunchback. No, let's leave her in. Alright, here we go. Let's get this done. Right, let's get this done. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. We normally engage them on the slope up there. Uh, the thing about this map is they're going to have, re if your reinforcements come, they come from this side. So I want to be closer to them than anything because I think it's one of those things where we can handle the reinforcements before we fully engage these guys. They do have the height, but if they don't have long range weapons, we can quickly shift over here and kill the reinforcements before they engage with I don't know if they'll have reinforcements in this battle but I do like moving over this way and this room to fall back here too if we have to mm. Waiting for orders. okay what do we got here commando 1d scorpion SRM I think the 1D is the uh, auto cannon. Is it the 1D that's the auto cannon version? The AC2? I think so. Okay, we got somebody else. Now we do have an ECM in the Wolverine, but it's not much of one. Another Scorpion SRM. Really? Ready for orders. I don't know whether it's just. I'm getting completely unlucky with these missions. Or if something has changed since I reinstalled. Missed. You did. Yes, Commander. And I wish we had more uh, laser points on that particular Wolverine. Um, Three is just really isn't yep, enough or anything. And you could go with a large and two mediums. But we really need to find some LBXs, I think. At the lower uh, levels, the scatter fire from LBXs really helps out. Oh, there better be more than that. Commander? Well, we know who your target is. Aye. 
Oh, that's that guy moving. Yeah, he's out in the open now, eh? Okay, so, so that's the large laser version. I think it's... Wait, this is the C? Or the D? The D. I think the C is the uh, AC version. Right, let's get this done and go home. Uh, front stepping, I think. It's got no armor. Any kind of step will finish this guy off. Once again, the Wolverine, Wolverine is proving itself as an awesome melee mech. Recommend, guys, if you guys are using any mech, from my experience anyway. Well, the Hunchback's not too, too bad, but the extra five tons of the Wolverine, um, the fact that it's got good leg armor and stuff, it's, it's only three units, really. It's so worth making it a melee mech if you can. Especially if you need one early on. And you've got a Wolverine, it's definitely worth it. All my experience has led to that. Yes, Commander. This guy's running from you. This should be good. Okay, looks like three hits there. Yep. Um, Full let's end this guy's threat large laser. I think his large laser is in his right arm, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, solid damage on this guy. Enemy mech. Not sure if that's supposed to happen, that... When the engine gets destroyed, you you can still function. Not sure if that's working as intended or not. Orders. Um. No. Really, eh? Let's get into here. Maybe we get lucky. Like that. Reporting enemy vehicle, commander. Enemy vehicle, commander. Roger that. Megazor. Alright. 23% chance. Gonna do an offensive push. Maybe push him back next turn. Just try for a CT hit. It says minus zero. I think that's just for this turn. Negative damage. I think next turn he gets the it gets it applied. Unless I'm wrong. Guy's cooking. Still cooking. I'm receiving you. Bar, B. Affirmative. That's gotta hurt. Next. Destroyed. Mission successful. All right, guys, we made eighty-seven thousand off that. Probably spent about up to about ten or so on repairs. I'm really sorry that these missions weren't any better. We did take two one and a half skull and a one skull mission, and still ended up with crap. Um, look at this, just garbage. Um, I'm gonna take the two internal combustion engines for cash. Commando part, three SRM6s. Well, junk. Alright, well, sorry for the lackluster, uh, missions today, guys. That's just, um, pretty sad. Um, but hopefully next time. Uh, we'll be picking up something better. Uh, we're into our next financial report. We do have a little bit of extra C bills, which is nice. Um, 
Yeah, for the most part, we came out pretty well, pretty good on this. We don't really have any components that we can switch around or add to our mechs at this point, but uh, we can worry about that next time. I might jump systems. Um, well, I don't know. We still got. Let's have a look at the contracts real quick. Two skull on guard. Embassy extraction. Let's jump. Let's see if we can find a close one skull system. I'll do that between episodes. See if I can jump one or one and a half skulls so we can find some tougher missions. I think we're ready to move up with what we have. Um, yeah, I think we're more than ready to move up. So I'm going to end the episode there. If you guys liked it, drop a like. Also drop any comments in the comment section down below. Um, if you agree or disagree with what I was saying about coding or if you know any coders or you're a coder yourself, um, feel free to comment in the comment section down below about what I just said. Um, yeah. And until next time, we'll see you all later.